Sabres Live is presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos. Nothing else comes close. We are going to overtime! The preseason is done. It is time to get serious about the regular season, the 2022-23 season. And when you are serious about the game, bet on Buffalo at the only sports books in Western New York. Seneca Resorts and Casinos betting counters are open daily and self-service betting kiosks are available 24-7 at all three locations. Whether you visit Seneca, Niagara, Allegheny, or Buffalo Creek, the Sports Lounge features the latest lines and multiple screens so you never miss a play. The sports book at Seneca Resorts and Casinos where the love of the game meets the thrill of the win, Marty Buran. And the wins, may they be plentiful this coming season. <laughs> a little bit of a challenging weekend organizationally to close things out with the uh, uh, back-to-back losses by the Sabres and uh, Amherst this weekend that, uh, you know, have us longing very quickly for the start of the regular season. Well, I got... I was going to start by doing my Allen Iverson. It's practice. We're talking about practice. I'm going to trade it in. We're talking about preseason. We're talking about preseason. I'm starting to like, okay, preseason was like five years ago in my mind right now. Yes, there's things we got to take out of it, but there's also things you put aside. And the pace is like 10 times higher in the first game of the regular season than it is in the preseason. So Mm -hmm. for the Sabres and for everybody else, it is good to build on some good results in the preseason and good individuals showing in the preseason, but it does not matter after 20 games. Uh, you know, when it starts next Thursday against the Ottawa senators, we're not mm-hmm. going to say, Oh yeah, buddy, he scored two goals in 20 games, but he had three in the preseason. That was fantastic. No, we're, we're throwing the preseason in the garbage. It doesn't count, but some but, yes. had to live through it, especially Eric <laughs> Comrie with a couple of challenging uh, games in goal. We will get right into Kyle Opozo and the leadership group here momentarily. But since we are trying to put a bow and or <laughs> forget completely the preseason, what is it like when you're Eric Comrie? Uh, New team, two games, mismatched in <laughs> both. Team did not play well in both in front of them. What's that like? I'll say this. It's not fun. And... Uh, look, as much as you don't want to make excuses, but I remember when they would pose the lineup, right? And you see your name, oh, you're going to play uh, tomorrow night and mm-hmm. preseason against Columbus. And you're like, oh, well, because of travel issues, we're busing to Columbus the night before. Some pe- players are going to buzz the day of. Uh, and then you look at your lineup and then you look at Columbus's lineup or you look at their lineup and you look at Pittsburgh's lineup. And no, I want to be the guy that plays with my full team in front of me. Give myself a chance to feel good and prepare. But you have also Craig Anderson there. He's a veteran, mm-hmm. right? And he's going to get that opportunity. I knew that when I played with Henrik Lundqvist or even with Miller to a certain extent, like he was getting ready for the season. So I knew that I was going to be a bit of the guinea pig and was going to get some of the, you know, not so favorable matchups. But mm-hmm. there's also the other side of that coin where you're like, okay, I'm going to get an opportunity to really show what I've got. Well, that's only if things go really, really, really well. Right. Most likely, it's going to be average at best. You're going to face a lot of scoring chances, a lot of wide open guys. Uh, some players are going to get outmatched in the line combination and the defense pairing combination. So I feel like this was tough for Eric Comrie to be put in those two situations. There were six games, mm-hmm. right? So I understand that Craig Anderson would would probably play two of them and get favorable matchups. Uh, but I think that I would have tried to have found a favorable matchup for Eric Comrie to play in. Both of those games were really not to his advantage. I, I felt bad for him because I know the feeling. Stabers were perfect at home in the preseason. And uh, their two losses, of course, happened on the road in Columbus and Pittsburgh. As you can tell, Marty, I'm on the road in Rochester right now. They had back-to-back preseason games. And they lost the first one on Saturday in Syracuse by a score of 4-2, which included a late empty netter with a lineup that was largely made up of guys who were on tryouts and or, you know, expected to play in Cincinnati. This night's lineup was more reminiscent of what we will see when the season begins and it couldn't have gone worse in fact terrible was the word used to describe the first period by seth appard overwhelming for our players was also used because 
it ties in with the youth, obviously, that the Sabres yeah. have. And and the Amherst are, you know, seeing an awful lot of these guys. They're they're going to have to learn a lot on a nightly basis. But what ties well, I'll this say all this, together? Duffer. Hang on, hang on. Okay, hang go on. ahead. What ties this all together is the Sabres have their leadership group in place now with Kyle Oposo wearing the C. And what happened in this game against Utica, a 5-1 loss for the Amherst, was that in the first minute of period number three, Captain Michael Merce decided on his own to settle a score from last year's playoffs when Robbie Russo took him out with a high illegal hit that ended Merce's playoff run three games into the series against the Comets. He wasn't counting on anyone else to do the job for him. It was, this needs to be settled. Mersh is clearly not a fighter. He's had five now in the AHL over the course of his long career. Um, and, and I sense that in different ways, it was really a weekend to learn about what Buffalo and Rochester have in the form of their captains. And now we ask, what can the young players learn from these captains moving forward? Asking you, who knows more about the actual value of someone who wears a letter on a team. And I, and I want to say this quickly to wrap up preseason. Some people may say, but in Pittsburgh, they were only missing Skinner and Thompson up front. Like it was a good lineup. They had mm-hmm. Olofsson. They had Quinn Paterka, Middlestat, talk there. Okay, yes, but on the back end, you didn't have Darlene. You didn't have power. You didn't have Sam Wilson. So right. that's a big piece. Look at Rochester in Sunday night. Mm-hmm. They had zero shots in the first period. They were down 3 nothing, And mm-hmm. you say, well, maybe they had some really good guys offensively, but they, they, most of their defensemen that are going to play big roles are still here in Buffalo. They're going through waivers and will end up in Rochester. So mm-hmm. all I'm saying is that having those guys on the back end to be able to transition, to move the puck out of your zone, to get on the attack is huge. And mm-hmm. unfortunately in Pittsburgh, well, Darlene Power and Samuelson are probably one, two, three on the depth chart and defense. And that's, that's yeah. tough to miss. So, now, to go to the leadership, it was awesome to see uh, Mersh do that in Rochester. You you hope nobody gets hurt. He doesn't get hurt trying to settle a score, but that was great to do it. Now you move on. Uh, when it comes to Buffalo, they announced on Saturday that uh, they will have a captain, and that is Kyle Poso, and they will have alternate captains. It's not assistant captains, by the way. For those who keep saying assistant captains, it's alternate captains. Mm-hmm. That's why they were the A in Zemgis Gergensen's and Rasmus Dahlin. And I think that is the absolute best trio to get, um, especially with Kyle. We've talked about it now for a while. He is a, a leader that, that leads not only by example, but wants everybody else to do good. Like mm-hmm. he would give himself up for somebody else to perform and do well. Mm-hmm. I played with Cal. He was a young man in this league when I was with the New York Islanders for one season. And I can remember a preseason game in Calgary where Dion Phaneuf jumped so high and hit Caliposo in the head with an elbow that I didn't even know him. And I went to center ice wanting to beat the crap out of Dion Phaneuf because mm-hmm. I was like, Cal is a guy that I want to follow. I don't know him. He's a young man. I'm a veteran by that point, but I want I want to follow him. Mm-hmm. And if he got a cheap shot, I want to jump in there and defend him, right? And I think that this young Sabre, well, I, let's not call them young Sabres anymore, this Sabres group. What do you uh, mean that? They're going to be one of the youngest in the they're league. They're still young, but I, I like to think that they've got youth, but has a lot of experience, or youth with a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to use young as, well, it's an easy way to make an excuse. They're a young team. No, no, no. Right. This Sabres team, uh, led now by Kevin Adams, Don Granado, and now Kyle Oposo, uh, to me, is heading in a really, really, really good place, especially when it comes to the leadership and the support that they will get. When was the last time you saw Rasmus Dahlin and Zemgis Gergensen's flanking, arguably, the leader of the group this is a trick question flanking caliposo no 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 no. oh flanking the leader of the group was it when they walk rj at yes the last sir game when yes. they both were on this either is... side and walked if them through were, everybody if, if you were ever remember i told you last i'm week glad i asked I was... a question it's like a spelling bee when you say can i have the origin and i get you to talk to give me hints like <laughs> that's what, what i, I wanted to last know. week i was watching at 12 30 in the morning 
the RJ game. Yeah, you rewatch it. On the ice. And so that's why it's really top of mind how we were talking on the air then in the post game. Wow, look at Darlene and Gergensen's and just how into this yep. moment they are and how caring they are for RJ and all the rest of it. And that may sound silly in the big picture or trying to win games or whatever, whatever, but you need real people that are genuinely invested yeah. in everything. That's the top down message right now is I don't care whether you, where you were drafted. This is from Kevin Adams. Like we need you to be all in, in all the moments. And I think it's very natural to have longest tenured in Zemgis Gergensen's future superstar, maybe future captain in Rasmus Dallin mm -hmm. and Kyle Oposo. It's a very simple conclusion to draw, but we're also still looking at the likes of the Tucks and others of the world who wow. may still wear very prominent letters in the years ahead. Okay, well, there's a difference, a difference between captains and alternate captains and mm -hmm. leadership group. And I think that's where we have to also draw something. But to come back to Zemgus, look, was Zemgus a leader when he first got to Buffalo? No. And I, I, Zemgus would be the first one to say, I did some stupid things. I, you know, I wasn't part of the, 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 the solution. Uh, we weren't winning. It was hard. But the one thing that I have said now for two or three years, at the very, um, you know, little, maybe even longer than that, is mm -hmm. that I feel like this organization, this team, this, these players have to connect with the community, with Western New York, Southern Ontario. What are the values here? You live here long enough, you know the values, you know the people, you know who you're playing for, mm -hmm. right? And this is different. This is unique to Buffalo. If you're in New York, it's hard. It's New York City. It's Manhattan. It's like the boroughs. It's like you don't connect with the fan base the same way. If you're in LA, Chicago, Philly, there's a certain extent, but it's it's different. Buffalo has this unique opportunity to connect, right? Players, organization, fans. And so Zemgus, having been here the longest, has this ability to connect the group with the fans because he's been around. He's been through hard times. He's felt the pain of the fan base mm -hmm. through his playing days. And what I've seen out of Zemgus, especially the day he got hurt, in this scrimmage on January of 2021. Mm. Yep. Um, that was when they played the 56 game schedule that was in training camp. And he had this awful injury on the ice. We were both there. Mm. And like is it what he did in the locker room all year and and still being around, even though he went through his really, really hard time. To mm. me, that showed leadership. And at that moment, I I kind of felt like Zemgus was gonna be a true leader for this team for mm -hmm. you know for this group and and kevin adams and don granado rewarded him with that today yeah i i just want well, not today well, saturday but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll quickly add to this um i will say that when when zemgus arrived um i th thought then that there was great potential for this yes like you're saying um, there may have been some missteps along the way. I don't think he walked into a particularly good situation. No. And what I'm saying is it's almost like with COVID and everything else, we've, we've lost touch with some players because we haven't been around them as much personally. So maybe I'm partial to this player in Zemgis because I've known him longer <laughs> than anybody else on the team because yeah. he's been longer, but I'm still basing it off of, and I'm, you know, I don't know how many people are like this, but I'm, I'm kind of big on first impressions and then the follow-ups to those first impressions. Okay. And I would tell you this, that around the rink, but as importantly, away from the rink, I was pretty, you know, impressed let's say by, by some of the things that Zemgis did. And um, so I'm not surprised that there are people in the organization that really, really, really like him. And that's why he is still here after all this time and all this turnover, because 
it's almost like you're hoping that for all the crap that you've been through, you're a, such a good person. We want to reward you with what's yeah. next. We want to reward you with what's next. You've earned this opportunity to enjoy something here with this team that brought you into the NHL. I think that's fair and totally accurate, Duffer. And and I remember a few years back, I had a, a, a 69 uh, Z28 Camaro that I was looking to sell. I, I mean, I wasn't driving it around anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah. And two people in the organization asked me about the car. And one was Mr. Pagula. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, come on in. I'll sell you my car. Uh, but he had other cars and he was he was busy with the bills, buying the bills at the time, I think, or oh, whatnot. Um, so my car was not a priority. He didn't have any spare change. At and, the uh, it was come not on. a priority at the time. Uh, but Zemgus was the other guy. Like, I was just walking around. He goes, hey, I heard you're uh, trying to maybe sell your car. Like, yeah. And he called me in the summer. He's like, uh, you still have that car? And then he was getting married. And then, you know, it was everything. He goes, I don't think I can, you know, swing it this summer and, and say, hey, honey, I just bought this car or whatnot. But anyway, yeah. all I'm saying is that I always thought he was a fantastic person, always mm -hmm. wanting to talk, always wanting to, uh, you know, spend a few minutes. And uh, I've seen, I've seen the work that he's put on the ice. And although mm -hmm. he's not an all-star and Latvia's like not voting be. exactly for him to go to the game anymore, um, he has a value to this team that uh, deserves a letter in his chest. Now, um, the other guy in Rasmus Dahlin, yeah. I, I think that was, I, there was some social media responses. They're like, well, why are you giving the young Dalene guy a, a more responsibilities? Like he's finally coming around to be the player that we all want to be. Why do you put in responsibilities? I think that Dalene has put those responsibilities on his shoulders last year, especially. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as embraced that challenge of being a leader, embrace that challenge of being respond to cheap shots that come after him by Brian, Brad Marchand and, and mm. whatnot. And I think this is about the perfect time to yeah. again, reward him and say, you know what? We've seen the leadership that you've shown and it could have been talk. It could have been Thompson. Okay. It well, could hold, have been pause, other pause, guys, pause. but, but yeah. Darlene was the right guy for that other a. Okay. D Darlene Thompson tuck. Who's the next captain after Kyle? I got to see more. I'm not ready to make that decision. See and more I, knocks. I've got to see more knocks the third and fourth and fifth. Um, no, I got to see more of them. I'm not yeah. ready to say who's the next captain because to be honest Boy, with you, how's that fence treating you? No, I, I was about to jump on the fence and tell you because <laughs> I hate to say it, but I don't think, and not that I don't think I know we haven't had a true leader captain with this organization in mm -hmm. a long time. And I don't want to look past the new captain. I mm -hmm. want to say, please, thank you. Thank God we have a captain now that I can feel as a, as a, a employee right. of the organization, but also as a fan of the, the, the game sure. and as a fan yeah. of the team, somebody that I am so proud to say, yeah, he's our captain. Well, he is on an expiring contract, and this is a cop out of an answer that you won't even project. Like you're not offending Kyle. You think? Like you, you, if you want me to rephrase the question and say, Marty, five years from now, okay. which one of Darlene Thompson and Tuck is going to be the captain of this team, or D, would, none of the above? If I had to take a guess, it would be Rasmus Darlene. I, right. I had of Thompson and Tuck, and. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that that's why they gave him DA now. I mean, they may have had that conversation where are we going because Kevin Adams always thinks down the road. Like I'm not saying he has a one year, two year, five year, 10 year plan, but you know, some people do these, these step, but I think he's looking also at what do we have coming up? You have to do that as a GM yeah. with contracts, with, you know, salary cap. And Don Granado does the same thing too. I think that with the, question the way you're asking it mm -hmm. most likely in my opinion would be Rasmus Dahlin now mm -hmm. could that change over the next year or two and maybe is Dahlin very comfortable to where he's at as mm -hmm. an alternate captains and performs and says that's where I should be for this organization and somebody else can emerge 
-hmm. Look, two years ago, we weren't talking about Caliposo being the captain of the Buffalo Sabres. Or Tage Thompson. Or Tage Thompson or Alex Tuck. He wasn't even here. But Caliposo, we're thinking, well, there would be an opportunity to buy out his contract. You know, if he's not healthy, they'll just put him on long-term IR. We we kind of free up that that money. Like we weren't talking about Caliposo two years ago as the leader, the true leader of this team. So right. I'll say Darlene for the question, but it could go anywhere. All right. Both of us have uh, exhausted uh, time unnecessarily here. So I'm going to demand of both of us that we pick up the pace, finish strong, short shifts. Come on. I don't know if you even really answered the Comrie thing. So I'm no, going to get there. I'm, I'm yes, going to make it more succinct here. You were talking about it, but it, okay, real quick. Any negative carryover for Eric Comrie as he starts his first season in Buffalo? Um, I don't want to say extreme negative, but there's got to be a little bit feeling in his head that says, Ugh, like preseason didn't go well, right? But, mm -hmm. but I think it's easy to push it aside okay. knowing that you're going to have a much better team in front of you when you play. If it is Thursday against the Ottawa Senators or Saturday against Florida or on the uh, Western Canadian road trip, like whatever it is, mm -hmm. I, I think he can easily put that aside. But it, it's a – look, that whole Anderson, Comrie, Okopeka, Lukanen thing is, is still very, very in the mix right now because mm -hmm. I thought a big surprise out of camp was Okopeka, Lukanen and how he performed. Mm -hmm. So – do I think that he's won the job over the other two? No, that's not where I'm at. But he's he's definitely put himself in a really good spot. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in the first month, two two weeks, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like he's put himself in a good light. So maybe then we see Luke in earlier in Buffalo um, than than some were projecting. It remains to be seen. But we I do hope know not this. because that would mean that they don't get off to a good start. Their goaltending is not playing well if somebody gets hurt. Yeah, so I'm hoping that it comes organically right. in the right time without mm. having to go through like some bad moments. Well, unfortunately, injury here in Rochester uh, in the fe preseason finale, Malcolm Subban left with one minute left yeah. in the second period. Uh, awkward collision. Stevens was uh, backing towards the goal. Um, I'm going to assume unintentionally fell over him. And that of course, put, uh, some unnecessary and unexpected weight pressure, whatever on Subban's, uh, seemingly his right leg. Um, the coach Seth Appert said after the game that the early belief is that it won't be a super long-term, uh, problem. So fingers crossed for Malcolm on that front. Uh, anybody else quickly though, as we go through, and look, we've got the whole week, obviously, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday show on Sabres Live to really drive up, you know, yes. individual player expectations, performance predictions, and then start, you know, piecing together if we haven't already. <laughs> I think the coach has done it for us with the line combinations. Yeah. But is there any other individual here that we need to discuss at this point in time, as we're still a few days away from both the Sabres and Amherst starting their respective seasons. Okay, I'm going to say, and this may sound weird, Ilya Labushkin. I was okay. impressed with Ilya Labushkin in camp, and we mm -hmm. didn't talk much about him. We did on Tuesday night when we broadcast a Sabres preseason game against Carolina, and mm -hmm. his ability to provide offense, I did not expect that at all. Now, it was against a lesser Carolina lineup, but still the – the, the confidence to make cross ice pass in the slot to Casey Middlestat that leads to Alex Tuck's chance. And there was a lot of Labushkin's game with the puck that I was very impressed by. Mm -hmm. So we know Darlene can move the puck really well. We know power is great with the puck and the skating. And Yoki Aryu can move the puck well. Bryson can skate well. And now Labushkin, if he continues to play with confidence and moving the puck well, it really gives me... Uh, really confidence uh, of what my 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 blue line, my top six on D is going to be able to do in transition and and get the puck to the skill guys up front. Um, Bryson, Pilot, Fitzgerald. The latter didn't play as much, unfortunately. But yeah. how do you see the three of them and the pecking order moving forward? We have to see, and we'll talk about it obviously this week on Sabres Live. Like who is maybe injured to start the season who's not going to be on the uh, 23 men roster. I think it's Bryson to start the season. I really think that uh, you have your top five, including Labushkin with power. Yoki, are you Samuelson? I think mm -hmm. it's Bryson. 
to me as the uh, you know the other D man on the third pair. Um, I think Fitzgerald is is there, and again it's Fitzgerald and then Pilot. That my my depth chart on D has not changed in mm. training camp, and maybe it sh it should have. I think Pilot had a good camp, but not enough to say I am going to change my depth chart. Body of work I think is really important for Kevin Adams, Don uh, Don Granado, and myself. And Fitzgerald's body of work last year, both in Rochester and Buffalo, to me, have him in the seventh spot. Anything else from an individual Saber standpoint? Anybody that you just, I don't know, had a strong feeling about one way or the other? Um, I think Dylan Cousins is going to be, uh, and I, I know we've said that and it's been said everywhere, but I keep going back to, I got this feeling that he will not only be a, a center that Don Granado is going to rely up, upon late in periods, late in games, defensively holding on to one goal lead. I think he'll get 25 goals or plus. Mm -hmm. I think he, he will be able to score and produce. To me, it's going to it's gonna be his, uh, his breakout year and whatever we want to say, but I, I'm looking for big things out of Dylan Cousins. Uh, not a great week for hockey, huh? No, not a... <laughs> We've talked about Hockey Canada on the show on Friday with Darren Drager, and that's not good. There's and just now, and, so many, there's and, and, so many negative stories right now. It doesn't take long to, you know, turn your attention to another one. That that's disappointing. But I it's say disappointing that this, because it, I would hope, Defer, that teams and media outlet and organization, when it comes to anybody in the organization, after everything that's happened over the last few years and mm. the, the the courage that so many have displayed to come up with the truth, right? Cow Beach, mm. come out with the truth and 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 change things for the better. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of courage, right? And to me, that there's still some of these stories that are coming out. Like it, these organizations, in my opinion, and I'm not just talking hockey teams, I'm talking newspaper, I'm talking TV stations, I'm talking um, hockey federations or whatnot, should, should, should do their homework and, right. and these people and, mm -hmm. and find out the truth about anybody. Look, I, I can tell you this. Years ago, Mike Rupp told me a story about Lou Lamorello, and mm -hmm. we all know Lou and how he deals with things, but Michael Rupp was playing for Lou in New Jersey, left two tickets to a buddy of his, at, you know, the players get two tickets. Okay, Joe Smith, two tickets. Boom. There you go. He's my buddy. After the game, Lou went to my crop and said, hey, listen, uh, you're, 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 you're guy that you gave tickets to today, um, I don't want him coming back to games. Rupper says, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, um, I do checks. I do background checks on, on people. And... Mm -hmm. What came out with him was not good. And he goes, I know he had some trouble as a youth and whatever and teenagers and young adult, but he's, he's better. He's better. And he goes, well, that, my, my red flag went up and no, that's not happening again. So I, if, if Lou was able to do that back then, I think organizations should be able to find the truth about a lot of what's happening uh, inside their walls. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> it was, yeah, there's, there's just so much room for improvement. Yeah. across the board here um man it is uh i don't even know i mean this is the, this is one of these things evolving on a daily basis obviously this you know it's the, the reason we're kind of sitting here with the latest pile on is ian cole in, in tampa and the accusations towards him and he's been suspended by the lightning organization pending an investigation but it just it's a lot and and you're right like as we sit here and say it's a lot we're not saying this because oh I wish they would put the focus back in the game. No, not at all. <laughs> no, like the, these, these stories, like we're not asking them to go away. We're asking, like you said, be better all around, like weed out the bad people and be more focused on creating change here. That that's what has to happen. This, this and world, whatever it was is it can't continue to exist this way. There's too many people, as you just mentioned, Lamorello, and and this is a good thing. There's too many people paying attention to this. Yeah. Right. Like enough with Duffer. the awfulness. Like, when when I played here, if we were out until three thirty on Chippewa, mm -hmm. somebody would call Lindy. 
Right. We'd let them know, hey, your mm-hmm. boys were out, right? And I'm just saying, like, it's silly things, but mm-hmm. your boys were out. Like, yeah. they know Scotty Bowman knew his players what they were doing. He uh, had the hotel check and see who came in after a curfew. Yeah. That's yeah. the way it, it works. Right. That's the way it should go. Now, um, I, I, you know, you talked about the lightning suspending Ian Cole. Like I have three daughters, you have two daughters. Like, like that story is disturbing. And I know that there is going to be an investigation, Correct. but that is disturbing. And as Darren Drager said Friday on Sabres live, when it comes to hockey Canada, mm-hmm. like we've shifted our focus over to hockey Canada. Are they going to fire everybody and mm-hmm. clean house? And you know, the sponsors, I we've almost lost our focus on what happened in the two instances that was very focused to the point, like uh, the world juniors team in 2018, I believe. Well, 18 and and 2004, but like that's there, there's victims there and there's, there's truth to be found there as well. Like that's, that's what it comes down to. I don't think that's going away. Like I understand what Darren was saying, but I think what's really important here is that you can't just, be narrow focused on one thing especially when clearly the number of negative dominoes that have been unearthed you know because of this um like you can only just sit here and hope that things like but honestly marty like i am so close to just not knowing what to think with so many aspects of the hockey canada yeah. And and then like Darren even mentioned it. And then I read it multiple times in different sources and stuff. And this is just how I'm wired. And I understand how business works. But like the fact that anybody could even with a straight face talk about, you know, a potential CEO through this mess requiring a significant severance before it's all you know what i, I mean know. like I, I hear those when darren words, said that i i like it made but me then cringe. I read it like there was there were so there have been but there, again there like are, that's because and this is the how wrong it is but that's because there's so many layers of hockey canada for example that are like mm-hmm. well we did the right things and if we mm-hmm. fire him we owe that because it's I in know. his contract yeah. and it was yeah. no wrongdoing of his part because he right. didn't like yes there is yeah. wrongdoing in this part mm-hmm. because from what we've on like read on what Rick rested as read as wrote as written, I should say, man, my mm-hmm. English today, um, you know, and, and others is that they were moving using funds to pay off and all of this, like mm-hmm. that had to be approved by somebody, somebody at the top and there's yeah. wrongdoing just in that alone. Like, yeah, I, to know that it, it, it's millions of dollars of severance. Oh, my gosh. Like, are we kidding here? I know. I know it's just, it just all leaves you with such a terrible taste. Um, and then <laughs> it hit me the other day because, and it, you know, there's a reason people say it's that's politics, right? It hit me the other day that you typically don't hear from that many politicians. But yeah. this is a PR opportunity, right? Yeah. I'm going to be the one that's really vocal, outspoken, in the media, demanding answers. This is their opportunity to shine, right? Let's not forget how much corruption exists in politics. <laughs> so there's some irony potentially down the road here of people that are being very outspoken because it's the PR moment of their career mm-hmm. to have a voice and yet, careful. No, I don't. I hope I'm wrong on this. All I'm saying is politics often reveals some skeletons. Well, you know I'll what say I mean? This, oh. And as I tell my kids, and I'm sure a lot of people tell their kids all the time, especially when it comes to social media. Look, mm. I did some stupid things as a kid, but they were stupid things as a kid. Mm. And the kids would do, right? And that mm. I, we didn't have social media and all of that. But now, days... Like you are going to be a a lawyer, a doctor, uh, whatever, right? Like uh, a a policeman, a studio analyst or whatever, right? It just like you can go back 
and look at social media posts and things mm -hmm. and actions that you've had. And I keep telling people, be kind, be, mm -hmm. be good people. It doesn't take much to do so every day. You get up in the morning, you say, I'm going to be a good person. I'm going to do the right thing. And right now we're seeing a lot of people that did not do the right thing or we're not being good people mm -hmm. for a while. And it just seems to be hitting the fan at the same time. And it's just disturbing because this game that is hockey mm -hmm. is, is what I have loved from 1977 when I was born. Like I was in a pajama, right? That was the Nordiques pajama. That's it. Like I love the game. And when there's, you know, yeah, I'll just say it. Shit hitting the fan like it has this week. It just it's it's hard. It's yeah. hard to see the game getting these moments. Yeah, but as anyone who you know, you have to understand this that no matter what you're passionate about, what you choose to focus on on a daily basis, almost everything falls into the category of it's a microcosm of society. So it's, you know, and hockey, unfortunately, is we're, we're it's negative side is being shown very much on display right now. The, yeah. the, 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 the ugly truth, if you will. And guess what? I mean, it's just like everyday life. That's why some people choose not to watch the news on a nightly basis. Because and some truths are hard to find. And that, they're like, true. And that's like, the thing. So like, like the thing with Ian Cole, right? It's hard to find. But as soon as it's up in the public with Tampa do say, mm -hmm. okay, well, we're suspending Ian Cole, putting an investigation because that's news to them. And mm -hmm. I totally get that. Yeah. They did the right thing in that moment. And hopefully, like with the findings that they have, we'll do mm -hmm. the right things as well. Uh, natural segue here, <laughs> based on how bad it went, how demoralized are you about the weekend of George? <laughs> oh, which, uh, which George? Well, you're more of a Jays guy. Oh my our, God. George and, Springer and, and running George into Springer and our George, who's a big Jays fan. Oh yeah. I was going to say, so that's, that's a, that was a tough weekend for George. Ugh. I'll say it was a tough weekend for my uh, son's billet family in Kemville, Ontario, or a huge Jays fan. And we're watching it on Saturday night, having Thanksgiving feast with yes. everybody at the I house. I was with my family. They were all disappointed. Yeah. I was, oh. I was smiling like a Cheshire cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Quickly. Woo. At 8-1, they kept saying, oh, for game three, uh, or if there's a game, they kept catching themselves, right? The announcers. So funny enough, on Sunday afternoon, I'm driving around because in the fourth quarter of the Bills game, it's 38-3. to three. I'm like, I'm driving around doing things or whatnot. Mm. With nine and a half minutes left, Eric Woods says, well, I don't want to jinx it here. The game is far from over. But I'm like, this guy watched the Blue Jays on Saturday night and doesn't want to jinx anything. Like, Eric, it's 38 to 3. You yeah. can this is gonna be a, a four and one Bills team that's gonna play on Kansas City next week, Sunday. But mm -hmm. I thought it was funny how Eric Woods cut himself, like, I don't want to jinx it. It's not it's, it's far from over. I'm like, no, it's over. But it was supposed to be over Saturday night with uh with the two George, uh, our George here at the one <laughs> Buffalo uh, studio and uh, George Springer was not good. Yeah, it was, it, I felt bad for George Springer for sure. That's a horrible way to have your season come to an end being, you know, taken off and then seeing the, it unravel the way it did. Um, last word. I'm not going to do three stars this week. I think there's just been, you know, an awful lot. Um, oh. And Quite frankly, you know, it's best we leave the preseason behind and not dwell on it too much. So um... I think that my last word was going to be this. Um, Jeremy White on the morning show on WGR 550 has a great preseason pledge that he takes every year. Basically, I'm not going to go too high or too low in preseason. It's only preseason. That's mostly when it comes to the bills. I think I, I wanted to do the same thing this year with the Sabres, but I was too excited about so many players. But mm. now that it's over, I can say preseason pledge on on the table here. It's done. It's over. Let's look to the regular season and let's get it going. And lots of time to do it. We'll be on the air with Sabres Live every day. Mm, I was going to say Monday to Friday. Tuesday to Friday, as far as the traditional formats of WGR Sports Radio 550 and MSG. And of course, on Mondays in podcast form, like right now. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you soon.